This is the trade routes. Okay, this is the materials that they have traded. Okay, see, look at this. Okay, so with respect to uh, IVC religion, you have again very few points only, which you can quickly remember. One thing is deity worship is evident. Okay, deity means now moving ahead. We'll discuss about the society of IVC people. This is our great path. See, this is the aerial view of it. See these, this is the water pool around which you have galleries or rooms. After the excavation, it looks like that. Uh, fortifications, assembly hall, granary, parallelly they exist, granary and great bath. Okay, just that there's no place, they put it there. Okay, great bath here. Now coming to trade. Okay, when we talk about the Indus Valley civilizations trade. Okay, so we know two things. That is one is internal trade and external region. They lived. Then comes our religion. Okay. So, with respect to uh, IVC religion, you have again very few points only, which you can quickly remember. One thing is, deity worship is evident. Okay. Deity means, when I say deity worship is evident, which means that they believed in a particular form of God. Okay. And how do you know that it is a God? By the way, it is depicted. Okay. If you take this Pushupati Maharaj. Uh, seal. Okay. In that he is sitting in a yogic pose. Okay. He is sitting in a yogic pose and then in those poses there are all the natural forces that are existing in the surrounding. Okay. So that is what it means. Right. So with the seals and terracotta figurines we have understood that there was deity worship. Okay. Male and female. Your, your seals. We have seen seals right. In that also there are female figurines where they are depicted in a standing posture. Okay, where they are in the, in, in, in a way they are, you know, blessing. Okay, so that posture shows that it could be a deity. Okay, and then it is animism. We have discussed this already. Okay, you know what is animism, right or not? Any doubts in what's animism? No? Yeah. And then they worshipped mother goddesses. Okay, female is shown that in such a way that she is believed to be a goddess. Okay, so one is where you will see a you know, um, a plant, uh, you know, blooming out of a woman's womb. Okay, that means she is a goddess, Mother Earth, who is giving birth to the next progeny. Okay, so one thing is, it, it, it signifies a fertility cult. What is a fertility cult? Santana Lakshmi Anta Vihavan Lakshmi. What is the role of that Lakshmi? Hindu religion. Uh -huh. So basically, Santana Lakshmi is got the role of blessing the you know, people with the offspring, right? That is nothing but a fertility cult, okay? You develop the function around the God, okay? So, likewise, fertility cult is signified in one way where the goddess is, you know, depicted for the, uh, you know, is, is, is depicted as a blessing for the progeny or offspring. And in the other way, it is like, you know, mother goddess is being worshipped in different forms, okay? Now, so, female with an infant and also there was worship of linga, that is phallus and yoni, that is the female sex organ. We believe that there existed the worship of linga and yoni. Then, Arapans also believe in male deity where you see it in Pashupati seal. See, actually, till this point of time, there is no male-female imbalance. Have you noticed it anywhere? Except for being a matriarchal society, have you seen any kind of male-female imbalance here? No. We were an equal society. We definitely were an equal society. And even at the times in early Vedic period, the next civilization which we are going to see, even then, when there was Varnashrama, okay, when there was Varna system, even then there was equality. Women were never kept out of anything. But in the later Vedic period is when all the concept of pollution, women to be isolated, women became weaker, all those things came as a evolution of culture. That's it. Got it? Yes. So IVC, you do not see any differentiation between the sexes. See, these are the religious symbols what we have. Okay. So that is our Pashupati Maharaja. Pashupati, seal this is. See, he is believed to be sitting here on a, you know, pedestal where he is sitting in a yogic pose and then he has animals here, animals all around. Okay, he has a headgear also. 
fine so he is believed to be a deity of ivc and this is the mother goddess he is our bearded man who is believed to be a priest and then we have certain uh, you know materialistic uh, affiliations okay one thing is people tree people tree was worshiped where you have seen in a seal where a people tree is being worshiped by a man okay so that shows that people tree was worshiped at this point of time early mara yes right or not those huge you know uh, truncated trees they are called as your people trees okay and then animal worship also appears to be popular and that is why around pashupati seal you see animals if it was only hunting that were you know animals were you know used for then we would see only people killing animals with the daggers but we don't do that okay we have seen animals around the pashupati who is believed to be a deity so that means what animal worship was also there and then fire worship was there we get to know from this you know seals and the uh, evidences in kalibangan and lothal kalibangan where rajasthan lothal gujarat okay in these places you see fire altars being developed see again fire altars development is a very technical thing alva yes or no have you noticed or not i don't know but you know fire altar development is a very technical thing till what length it should be what should be the breadth of it and what should be the height of it in which direction they should be placed all those are very much technical got it yes so and another important thing is their burial practices okay so generally harappans buried their dead ones in the north to south direction do we follow the event today yes this is how we bury even today north south direction generally that is why they don't allow you to sleep at home in this direction right or not north south alli malagbardu anta hetta that's the idea is only when you are finally gone is when they put you in this direction okay but according to us so this is one of the best direction to sleep okay so lot of contradictions exist in our own society if you open your eyes and see okay a lot of contradictions fine and then the dead were buried with a varying number of earthen pots so they uh, there is a belief that they believed in life after death now why would now we have like you know generally in the indian society hinduism okay people who follow hinduism have a different practice of giving you know certain things in charity after the death of a person yes or no yes so there are things that we do to pujari we give to purohit okay and then we give it to uh, people okay underprivileged people and then we give it to cows right or not footwears we give we give mattresses we give food we give certain types of grains only okay why all those is done we believe that there is a life after that and we are trying to help them okay we could do the same thing to an underprivileged person okay find somebody who is in need of it give all that to that person he'll be happy all along his life for the help that you've done okay but otherwise you know no offense to all the you know people who follow it but otherwise i'm just telling it's just a suggestion open suggestion okay so likewise these people also believed that whatever they were using were to be buried with them their favorite objects it could be okay in one of the burials we find a dog also with the human being okay so the the skeletons okay in some graves the dead were buried along with the goods such as bangles beads copper mirrors so this may believe that they, this may you know depict that they believed in the life after death so what is the symbolic burial they talking about kalibangan has yielded an evidence of a symbolic burial what is this this is little tantric andre here we do not know anything about tantrism okay never write anything called as tantrism in indus valley civilization but then the symbolic uh, burial analysis a very significant feature of this tantric uh, uh, worshipers andre you have uh, different types of worship uh, worship cults that develops in your 4 uh, to 6 6 to 4th century bc okay in in that time what happens tantric uh, uh, cult of worship also develops very greatly tantric form of worship is like mainly de- you know dedicated deducted from the atharva veda as what we believe okay atharva veda veda has a lot of chants from you know ancient uh, scriptures where there is lot of magical 
uh, spells that are being available in that particular Veda. Okay. So from there, a new cult of worship develops called as Tantric cult of worship. So there, magical chants and spells give wounds. And that they believe. Okay. So symbolic burial is something which shows that which exists for a particular ritual purpose. Okay. And we still have not yet understood what exactly it is. Okay. We just find a See, so far what we understand about IBC people, very progressive, very urban, and then they are like farsighted, all that, okay? Maybe if this is deciphered and if their writing is deciphered, we might understand a lot of negatives also about them, okay? So symbolic burial, we find it in Kalibangan. That is burial which contains hearts but no bones or skeletons, okay? Yes, Harappan stone objects. So that makes us believe that it's a worship of Linga and Yoni. Okay, their skeletal remains. That is the okay religion related 